Um, maybe like a... Mm. Okay guys, we've got a giant bike here today. This thing is just a giant escape. Okay, we got another custom e-bike build for you today. I wanna go over what bike this is, what makes this awesome, why it's the future, and we'll get right into it. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I take bikes and turn them into e-bikes and way better e-bikes, way more affordable bikes, e-bikes, than you could buy pre-made for what you get. Dollar for dollar, this is the best value way to get into an e-bike. Convert it yourself or pay someone to do it. Even if you pay someone like me to do it, it's still better dollar for dollar, watt for watt, pound for pound. This is like George Foreman, Muhammad Ali. It's not even close. All right, so let's get right into this, this giant bike. This is a giant escape. That what's, that's what makes it a giant. It's actually just like a large. But this is a, this is a nice road bike. This is a good entry level, intermediate, like in between there but good quality bike to start on. Like it, this is fairly new, hasn't been ridden much. He's, you know, he's like, ah, I haven't been riding it much. You don't got a motor on it. As soon as you see a hill, you're like, eh, I'm gonna go back home. <laughs> I'm gonna go back home where I got air conditioning. You got a motor on here. All of a sudden you see a hill, you're like, sweet, let's do this. <laughs> Fly up it. And you'll see later in my Johnny Nerd Out test where I put this up against a hill and this thing just conquers hills, even from a dead stop. But yeah, this is a road bike, maybe like a, mm, entry level gravel bike you could do this maybe like on like on gravel but nothing off-roady but this thing flies it's got tiny tires they're 700 by 32 c's so these things cut through the pavement really good really fast it's got hydraulic disc brakes um so this is a little bit step up this is what separates you know the entry level this is what kind of makes it more of like an inter intermediate bike so it's got the hydraulic disc brakes the tectros um so for that we put um hydraulic brake cutoffs on it they're just little magnet pickups that sense when the lever is pulled like this and those magnets get separated it says eh, they're braking let's cut power so you can't accidentally hit the throttle or pedal cuts power um battery we went with a small 48 volt 11.6 amp hour battery this thing is still going to be good for depending on how you ride it 20 to 45 miles really just depends on how much you're pedaling what kind of hills you're going up and how fast you're you know riding how much you're power you're drawing. And it's got Panasonic cells in here, so this should, if you take good care of it, should last for a very long time. Um, we went with the BBS-02. It's got a 750 watt motor, nominal rating, 44 tooth chain ring up front, gear shift sensor right here. It's a mid-drive. I strongly recommend putting a, a gear shift sensor on every mid-drive. Just acts like an automatic clutch. So when you shift gears, it cuts power just for a second, switches gears, and then keeps going. That's what's going to protect your chain, your drivetrain, make it last forever. When people are like, mid-drives destroy bikes, probably they didn't have a gear shift sensor on it or they weren't riding their bike correctly. That's a big myth. As long as you ride your bike properly, a mid-drive does not destroy bikes at all at all. Uh, for display, we went with the 500C color display. It's nice, it's nice and small. It has the buttons integrated into the screen. So it's all one unit. Shows you your real-time voltage. So it's a little bit more accurate of a display. Shows you your real-time watts being consumed by your motor. So you can see how much you know it's drawing from the battery. So you can kind of gauge, oh, I thought I was only putting out 100 watts of the battery, but I'm actually putting out 600. So this thing is not gonna last very long. Or conversely, like, wow, I thought this thing was, I thought the battery was doing all that work. That was just me. It's nice to have that information on here. It has trip, trip meters, average speed, top speed, all that jazz. Okay, anyways, onto the Johnny Nerd Out test. Why you're all here, let's go. So just to give you a quick description of what the Johnny Nerd Out tests are for, hill, cl hill climb test, which is ones from a standstill, and one's from a running start. And then one is just the top speed test on flat ground with just the motor. I don't pedal on any of these tests because I wanna show you what the motor is capable of doing. What the motor is capable of doing here and multiplying it by these gears. This kind of shows both low end and top end because with a hub motor, you're stuck on that one fixed gear ratio. A mid drive multiplies it by these gears back here. So if I wanna go climbing hills, I'll put it in this low gear. And then now that motor is getting multiplied by this, this gear. This is like a 36 tooth here, and this is 11 tooth here. That's almost a 300%, that's over a 300% gear ratio. If you understand physics, engineering at all, that makes perfect sense to you. If not, I don't know how to help you. But mid drive, it's the future. Let's go into Johnny Nerd Out test.
So you can see this is a 48 volt, 11 and a half amp hour battery, and this thing still got it up to 35 miles an hour with just the motor and still climbed any hill. People are always like, should I do a 48 volt or 52 volt? You can see it's 52 volt is just like having a little turbo on it. It just adds a little bit more pop. Like I probably could have gotten another mile per hour out of this. Probably would have gotten up to like 36 miles an hour, I bet. And maybe a little bit faster on the climb hill climbing. But honestly, if you want to change your performance, switch out your chain ring. That's going to be the biggest difference when it comes to how your e-bike performs. So cool. Yeah, if you're thinking about building a bike like this, like for a commuter, this would be a killer commuter. Put some pannier bags right here. Put a rack right here and then some bags on here. I'd put a, I'd put a mirror. I'd put a bell. I put a light front and rear, put a kickstand, and the customer for this one, he says he's got all that stuff, so he, he's gonna do it. Otherwise, I would have recommended doing it. But you put a rack on this with some bags. Man, this thing goes 35 miles an hour. This thing is a killer commuter. And it's super efficient with these tires. It's not gonna be draining the batteries. Like if this was a fat tire bike, it would be sucking that battery down real fast. But this is probably gonna get twice the amount of range as like a fat tire bike, like a four and a half inch by 26, because there's just less rolling resistance. So yeah, if you're looking for an economical commuter, you could probably pick one of these things up used, get like a 10 year old one for a couple hundred bucks. Same kind of frame though. If you wanna do this yourself, you could probably have one of these for around a thousand bucks, I bet, if you do it yourself. This bike, I think cost the customer about 1400 bucks, I wanna say, because you know, he had me do it, so you gotta pay labor. If you do this yourself, take off like 300 bucks. You could do this for about 1100 bucks if you did this yourself. Try to find any pre-made e-bike out there with a 750 watt mid drive that will climb hills like this bike and have a 35 mile an hour top speed for 1100 bucks. You will never find it unless, this is, unless you're watching this in the year like 2030 and we found a way to, to do this. But here in 2021, where I live, you just can't do it. Okay, thanks guys, take it easy.